Logan Anderson meticulously signed the final documents handed to him by Aiden, recognizing their crucial importance. Entrusting Aiden with the management of this significant portfolio, comprising some of Logan's largest responsibilities, including the holdings of billionaire investor and entrepreneur, Elliot Taylor, demanded precision. Elliot Taylor, a shrewd manipulator of wealth, thrived on leveraging his financial resources to orchestrate hostile takeovers, seizing control by acquiring stocks and swiftly divesting once his influence was secured. His modus operandi was to inflate his investments while disregarding the casualties left in his wake. In his capacity as Elliot's legal counsel, Logan had diligently upheld integrity, ensuring compliance with regulatory bodies like the SEC, thus shielding Elliot from legal entanglements. This delicate balance allowed Elliot to further swell his fortunes, funneling a portion into the coffers of Anderson, Thomas, and White Reagan, while Aiden deftly expanded their clientele base. With just a fortnight remaining, Aiden's grasp over the portfolios of Logan's clients, save for a select few, was nearing completion, marking the culmination of three arduous months of meticulous transfer efforts. Aiden, Dallas, Thomas, and Reagan White were acutely aware of Logan's impending retirement. Logan reiterated to himself once more that it was time to relinquish his professional duties and devote some much-needed time to himself. After all, he was one of the founding pillars of their firm. Together with Dallas and Reagan, he had transformed it from a modest storefront law practice into one of Columbus, Ohio's premier and most influential establishments. This journey had consumed the lion's share of his time, exacting a toll on both his and Caroline's personal lives over their two-decade marriage. Last month marked their 20th anniversary, during which they had raised two children, Anthony, 18, and Rachel, 17, who were now flourishing in college. Throughout those years, Caroline had been a devoted mother and spouse, while Logan had spared no effort in providing for their family. Their abode stood grand and opulent, catering to their every need. The children received top-tier education, and Caroline, maintaining her allure, frequented spas and health clubs. Cruising in her Mercedes convertible, she relished the wind tussling her long blonde locks, occasionally blaring the radio with the zest of a teenager, a recent development that brought joy to their lives. The sole discontent in Logan's otherwise fulfilling life stemmed from Caroline's waning interest in intimacy. While Logan's own desire remained present, Caroline's dwindling libido left him frustrated. Despite broaching the subject with her, Caroline simply attributed her diminished drive to a phase of low libido, promising to address it with her doctor. Nearly a year had passed since Caroline's last medical checkup, during which the issue hadn't been revisited. If anything, their intimate life had deteriorated further. Logan eventually ceased pressing the matter, resigning himself to silence. Another source of unease for him was Caroline's frequent trips back to her hometown of Lexington, Ohio. She claimed these visits were prompted by her mother's declining health and her sister Gabrielle's need for assistance. Both her mother and sister resided in Lexington, with Gabriella being divorced and alone. Caroline stayed with Gabriella during these trips, asserting that she was merely lending a helping hand to ease her sister's burden. These visits, which commenced seven months prior, had now become a bi-weekly occurrence. Caroline's routine departures on Thursday mornings Returning late Sunday nights left Logan to grapple with solitude for four or five days every other week, a solitude he despised. Despite her absence, Caroline made a point of calling every evening at ten and ensured herself and remained within reach at all times. Nevertheless, each departure marked another evening spent alone. His disappointment deepened further when, in the midst of her preparations for another trip, he revealed to Caroline that he had been diligently working as a surprise for her. He had hinted at this impending surprise weeks earlier, even teasing her with the involvement of Dallas, suggesting it was nearing completion. Logan had hoped Caroline's curiosity, or perhaps a tinge of jealousy towards Dallas, would prompt her to delay her departure, eager to uncover the secret. Yet, she displayed only passing interest, barely probing into the matter before returning to her packing. Logan, unsurprised by her lack of curiosity, resigned himself to her disinterest, silently watching as she readied herself for yet another trip. 
their farewells followed their usual routine. Shortly after, he departed for work, aware that she would be leaving within the hour. Later that day, after closing up his office, Logan paused to chat with Alice, his secretary, before strolling down the carpeted hallway to Dallas's office. Knocking once, he pushed the door open, a customary gesture among partners accustomed to impromptu visits. Hey Dallas, ready to call it a day. I'm buying if you fancy grabbing a cold one, Logan offered, entering unannounced. I'm in no rush to return to an empty house. Hi Logan, Dallas greeted with a warm smile. I'd love to, but Jacob's waiting for me tonight. We're off to a school play, Jacob Jr. starring in it. Poets of Doom. Sounds dreadful to me, but Jacob insists it's cool. Fair enough, kid. Your loss. Logan quipped with a smile of his own, masking the jest. Though I don't blame you, I remember my own kids in their plays as flawed as they were. They're still your kids, can't be bad. We're biased like that, as parents. Dallas chuckled and nodded in agreement. Despite being 47, she retained her beauty and was enjoying a happy second marriage that had endured for the past decade. How's my project progressing? Do you have everything you need? I can have Aiden lend a hand if necessary, Lovin inquired. Looking up, she shook her head confidently. Everything's on track and on schedule. Shouldn't be any issues at all. Just say the word and I'll take it from here. No need for Aiden. He's got his hands full with what you've assigned him. As you promised though, he's proving to be quite the diligent worker. He'll certainly be an asset with you stepping away. You know, Logan, I truly wish I could dissuade you from retiring, especially the thought of it. We're going to miss your presence around here. You were the driving force behind our success. I simply held on to your coattails in the early days and enjoyed the ride. I'll miss you the most. Are you absolutely certain you won't reconsider retiring? She asked. Not a chance. And don't underestimate yourself, Dallas. You carried your weight then, and you still do. You and Reagan will manage just fine. Plus, we've got a remarkable group of young talent. They impressed me with their dedication and hard work. Aiden and perhaps Alice Martinez could even be considered for partnership within a year or two. I had a lot of faith in both of them, and it's clear you trust Aiden completely. See you tomorrow and I'll be at the party in three weeks. Jacob wants to join as well. Feel free to bring him along, Logan said. All right then, good night, she replied. Logan drove to his sprawling estate nestled in the suburbs of Columbus. Situated on a four-acre plot, the house spanned over 4,500 square feet. Its features included a luxurious hot tub cascading into a pool, a cabana, two tennis courts, and a vast garden adorned with vibrant flowers and blossoming shrubs that maintained their colour from summer through fall. With the departure of their children, Caroline had let go of the cook and maid, leaving the house mostly empty. Logan had often remarked on its excessive size for just the two of them, a sentiment Caroline shared. Though she hadn't committed to it, Caroline acknowledged that it was time to consider downsizing. She suggested waiting a couple more years until the children settled. Parking in the four-car garage, Logan entered the kitchen, where he quickly popped a frozen dinner into the microwave before heading upstairs to change into more casual attire for the evening. As he descended the stairs, the landline phone rang, sparking hope that it was regarding one of his advertisements. Answering the call, Logan was pleased to learn it concerned his boat. A 33-foot powered sailboat moored on Lake Erie during the summer and fall, stored in a winter facility, on the lake during colder months. Following a productive conversation with a potential buyer who had test-driven the boat under the supervision of the marine owner, acting on Logan's behalf, an agreement was swiftly reached. The terms were settled and arrangements were made to dispatch a cashier's check for the agreed-upon sum to a designated post office box. Once the check was received, the title to the boat would be made available at the marina. The purchaser had already inspected the title during their trial run confirming that all necessary documentation was in order. Caroline would likely be pleased with the sale, as she had never been fond of the vessel. Having not accompanied Logan on any outings for years, her indifference to its departure was evident. Furthermore, with Logan's Jaguar and Audi promised to successful bidders, 
there were few concerns left to address at this point. In just two weeks' time, everything would be settled, marking the official commencement of Logan's retirement. While the sale of the house might take some time, in Caroline would have vacated the premises by then, allowing the realtor to showcase it without hindrance. Their new, smaller bungalow is now theirs, with some furniture already relocated. Any additional furnishings required could be acquired as needed. Logan mechanically consumed his frozen dinner, barely registering its taste before deciding to recline and lose himself in TV and snacks. Grabbing a cold bottle of Miller Lite, he retreated to the entertainment room, opting to indulge in some adult movies. With the children gone, he now had access to all channels, including those of a more mature nature. Selecting an adult channel, he found a narrative revolving around a hotel where guests engaged in indiscriminate liaisons. A scenario that didn't pose any issues for the characters, all boasting perfect physiques and uninhibited desires. However, as the movie unfolded, Logan found himself questioning the lack of variety and imagination in the encounters, each scene unfolding predictably, with performers often breaking the fourth wall with their gazes. The formulate nature left him more bored than aroused, unable to muster any enthusiasm to take matters into his own hands. Just as he was contemplating changing the channel, the ringing of the phone interrupted his viewing. Caroline's name flashed on the caller ID, and Logan answered. Hi Caroline, did you encounter any issues on your way there? Caroline's voice came through the line, no trouble at all honey, it was an easy trip. Mom's doing a bit better, but Gabriella seems stressed. I might extend my stay by a day if that's alright with you. Logan felt a knot tighten in his stomach at Caroline's comment, but he pushed aside the discomfort and responded calmly, sure, whatever you think is best. I'll just stay at work a bit longer since it's lonely here without you, but what about Monday? Do you need anything, or do you have enough? It seems you don't take much with you. Oh honey, that's because I have a lot of things here that I leave behind when I go. I'll be just fine, so don't you worry, Caroline reassured him. And by the way, how's that surprise coming? I can't wait to find out what it is. I didn't think you even cared. You weren't very interested this morning before I left for work. Logan chuckled, replying, Well, since you asked, it's right on schedule. Dallas is almost done with her part, and the rest is already in place. You'll be really surprised. I can't wait. Okay, honey, I'll call you tomorrow night. Be good, Caroline said before bidding him good night. As Logan hung up, he couldn't shake the feeling of Caroline's eagerness to end the call quickly. She didn't reciprocate his I love you with anything more than a simple good night. He reasoned she must be preoccupied with her mother, which brought a wry smile to his lips. Caroline's mother had never cared for him, and he felt the same way about her and her sister, Gabriella. The whole family seemed dysfunctional at best. Well, the rest of my weekend alone continues. Logan mused to himself. To occupy his mind, Logan called the kids and engaged in lengthy conversations with them, reminiscing for over an hour before reminding them of their upcoming visit in two weeks. Eventually, exhaustion overtook him, and he drifted off to sleep on the couch, only to wake in the middle of the night with a stiff neck. Retreating to bed, he'd found solace in the absence of dreams, a departure from the unsettling ones that had plagued him recently. The following two weeks transpired in typical fashion, with Logan diligently wrapping up his cases and ensuring Aiden was well versed in each of them. During the second week, he dedicated much of his time to informing his clients of his impending retirement. Most responded with congratulations and willingness to continue their arrangements with Aiden. However, a few sought assurances from either Dallas or Reagan, whom Logan promptly contacted to address their concerns. By the final Thursday when Caroline departed for Lexington, Logan had successfully kept his retirement plans concealed from her as intended. Her lack of interest in his work made it easy to avoid suspicion, and she had seemingly forgotten about the surprise he had planned. Logan chose not to bring it up again before her departure, intending to mention it when she called on Sunday morning to inform him of her return or potential extension of her stay. In any case, Logan was prepared for either scenario. Friday marked Logan's last day at work, and it was a whirlwind of activity. Alongside Alice, he tidied up the office and transferred paper files to Aiden, 
making a few final phone calls before instructing Alice to direct all incoming calls to Aiden, a key part of his strategy. Having entrusted Aiden with his own secretary, who Alice had worked closely with, Logan felt confident in his plan. Before leaving for the day, he ensured Dallas was prepared to set things into motion, receiving her assurance. Later that morning, Dallas departed for the courthouse, but promised to return in time for the retirement celebration scheduled at the Rayton Hotel. Despite Caroline's absence, the festivities were set to proceed as planned, promising a memorable event. After a brief lunch, Logan attended to various tasks that needed attention, and by 3 p.m., everything was set in motion. The final paperwork for the house had been signed, and movers were already en route, scheduled to complete their task by late Saturday afternoon. Upon their departure, a team of cleaners, meticulously hired by Logan, would commence a thorough top-to-bottom cleaning, with instructions to finish by evening, a promise rewarded with a bonus, which they promptly fulfilled. By the following day, realtors would ensure the for sale sign was prominently displayed in the front yard, initiating the next phase of Logan's transition. They informed him that they already had a list of prospective buyers lined up to view the property starting the following Monday, much to their satisfaction, as Logan had priced it competitively for a swift sale. With that settled, Logan's next priority was ensuring all financial arrangements were in order. Both Caroline and he maintained separate accounts alongside their joint ones, each possessing their own credit card. It had been Logan's insistence that they limit themselves to just one card each, as he preferred not to carry any credit balances. Caroline adhered to this rule faithfully, demonstrating prudence and responsibility in managing their finances. With the exception of Logan's private business accounts, handled by a firm contracted by his company, Caroline was well informed about their financial affairs. Although she was unaware of Logan's accounts within the firm, she had never shown any interest in probing further into his business matters over the years. Now with Logan's impending retirement, he closed all joint accounts and transferred the retirement funds to a new brokerage. Logan planned to conduct their joint affairs primarily in cash for the foreseeable future, or at least until they have finalized all their arrangements. With their new home slated to be located overseas, Logan saw no reason to maintain domestic bank accounts, given his indefinite absence from the United States. He had already set up an online account with an international bank that had branches in Europe and South America. Logan was confident that Caroline would adapt smoothly to the transition, given her astuteness in financial matters. Ensuring all travel arrangements were finalized, Logan double-checked the tickets and confirmed their destination. He envisioned spending the next several months with Caroline at a luxurious resort in Panama, sun, sands, swimming, sailing, horseback riding, the whole package. Logan had even visited the resort himself to verify its authenticity before instructing Alice to book the trip and make the necessary reservations. He wanted everything confirmed before his retirement. It's worth noting that Logan was financially secure, having amassed considerable wealth over the years. His involvement in numerous high-profile cases with affluent clients, coupled with his skillfulness in his field, allowed him to command substantial fees. Investing his earnings in high-risk accounts had proven lucrative, contributing to his financial success over the years. As an attorney, Logan was well-versed in the law and had lawfully transferred the majority of his assets into offshore accounts without any agreements with the US. These accounts remained intact, unbeknownst to Caroline, and were part of the surprise he had planned. If she were aware of them, she would likely be astonished by their value. Moreover, since this money resided outside the United States, it was not subject to U.S. tax laws or jurisdiction. As the day drew to a close, Logan drove to Robinson's for his retirement party, an event Caroline knew nothing about. He had ensured that his retirement remained a secret, as everyone in the firm had promised to keep it confidential. Despite Caroline's previous encouragement for him to retire, he had deliberately kept quiet about his plans intending the surprise to bring her joy. Acknowledging her complaints about the time he spent at work, Logan had informed his colleagues that his retirement was to be a surprise for Caroline, and he planned to reveal everything to her on Sunday night upon her return home. Logan was confident she would be back on Sunday, 
as he intended to kick off a surprise that morning when she called. So far, everything had unfolded perfectly, according to his plan. The party proved to be a lively affair. Logan found himself dancing with the women and engaging in conversations with the men, exchanging anecdotes about their most memorable cases. Aiden, who spent much of his time by Logan's side, demonstrated keen observance, ensuring nothing of significance escaped his notice. Logan held a high regard for the young man, recognizing his potential as a valuable asset to the firm. Dallas and Regan attended the party with their spouses, and Logan conversed with them at length. Only Dallas and Aiden were privy to all of Logan's plans, having been sworn to secrecy. As his legal representatives, Logan sensed Dallas's subtle approval of his actions, even if she didn't express it outright. He took her hand for a dance, and they discussed the final preparations. Are you certain everything is ready? Logan asked. She'll be back Sunday evening, and I want to ensure she's truly surprised. Rest assured, it's all set, Dallas reassured him. I have the checks and all the details meticulously arranged. She'll be pleasantly surprised, and you'll be satisfied. Logan chuckled. She's certainly going to enjoy being surprised in this manner, he said sarcastically, sharing a knowing glance with Dallas. But I truly believe it's going to be wonderful. By the way, I've secured the tickets for the resort. We'll be departing Sunday night for Panama. It's going to be a blast with nothing but relaxation on the agenda, and I plan to relish every moment. I'll reach out as soon as I have a permanent number, but in the meantime, my new cell will be active. You and Jacob should consider doing something similar yourselves someday, although for now, I'm enjoying my work too much to consider quitting. But that's a decision for you to make. Please pass my apologies to Reagan for not including him in all our plans. I stayed at the party until almost midnight before finally departing. Although I had missed Caroline's call, I was certain she had left a message. Upon arriving home, I found the message light blinking. After pressing the right button, I listened to Caroline's voicemail. Logan, where are you? I never miss your calls. Listen, I'm heading over to Mom's tonight, so don't try to reach me there. I don't want to disturb her. If she manages to get some sleep, she's exhausted all the time, and she really needs her rest. I'll call tomorrow night, so please be home. Good night, baby. Well, it was pretty much as Logan had anticipated. Caroline wouldn't be calling tonight. With Caroline's message left, the remainder of the evening was dedicated to packing his and Caroline's belongings. Logan realized he had limited time until Sunday night, and he aimed to avoid any last-minute trips by ensuring everything was packed before the movers arrived the next day. Careful to handle her belongings with precision, Logan meticulously packed Caroline's things, determined to leave no room for complaint. Deciding to spend the night at the bungalow, Logan arranged for all calls to be forwarded to his new cell starting the next day. Once he had transferred everything to the bungalow, he tied up loose ends, confirming the final piece of the surprise before retiring to bed. Despite feeling pleasantly tired from the party, he couldn't shake off the tension of the impending tight schedule. Hoping for a smooth execution, Logan drifted off to sleep. Saturday marked the commencement of packing and moving furniture from their home. While Logan found the process somewhat melancholic, he shrugged off the sentiment and left the movers to their tasks. He had arranged to meet their children at the bungalow around noon and intended to discuss his retirement plans with them, providing a hint but withholding details about Panama or any other surprises in store. Now was the time to uptake them. He made them promise not to call Caroline and spoil the surprise. He believed they would comply. When they arrived, he welcomed them in and got straight to the point. After providing a brief overview, he answered their questions and provided details as requested. Although Anthony and Rachel weren't thrilled with his decision, he assured them that their college tuition was covered, and they would always have a home to return to. He explained that his retirement was a mutual decision between him and Caroline, and they agreed it was the right time. While they expressed a desire to speak with Caroline, he insisted they wait until her return on Sunday night. Eventually, they relented. That evening, they went out to dinner and refrained from discussing the matter further. When Logan received Caroline's usual 10 o'clock call, she didn't mention extending her stay, 
reaffirming his expectation of her return on Sunday night. After the call, the kids once again raised concerns about his plans. Despite their doubts, Logan reassured them, and they retired for the night in the spare room with twin beds. He placed a phone call to ensure the movers had completed their task and the cleaning crew were scheduled. Both confirmations were affirmative, much to Logan's satisfaction. With one final call, he concluded his tasks for the night. Sunday loomed ahead, a day requiring minimal action as most preparations were already complete. Checking the house, Logan found everything in order, thanks to the movers and cleaners who had left the place immaculate and ready for viewing. Returning to the bungalow, he anticipated Caroline's call signaling her readiness to return home. He expected her usual call time, typically between 10 and 10.30. The kids had gone out to spend time with friends from their hometown, leaving Logan alone when Caroline's call came through. He answered promptly after the first ring. Hi Caroline, are you ready to head home? Logan inquired, awaiting her response with a hint of nerves creeping in. Well, yes and no, Logan. Caroline replied hesitantly. I actually like to stay a few more days to give Gabrielle some additional time to take care of things. Would you mind terribly if I did? Her voice sounded strained, as though she anticipated his disapproval. Logan felt a surge of anger, something he had suppressed for months, rising within him upon hearing her request. Struggling to contain his emotions, Logan grappled with Caroline's desire to prolong her stay. Why did she want to stay longer? Well, he knew the answer now, didn't he? He had been aware for over four months, ample time to begin devising his surprise. Now was the moment to unveil it, to execute the plan he had crafted during those past four months, once he had confirmed his suspicions. Now was the time. With his decision made, Logan's pent-up anger surged forth. He had suppressed it for too long, and now it demanded release. The rage made it challenging to speak without erupting into shouts. Responding to Caroline's request, he uttered, Well, Caroline, my dear, why would I mind if you wish to spend a few more nights with your lover, Christopher? Why should that bother me? Especially since you've been seeing him and that other guy, what's his name? Ah, yes, Larry. Your voice rose as anger consumed him, forcing him to rein in the urge to scream. You've been carrying on for the past seven months, or perhaps even longer. I'm not entirely sure. But what does it matter? It's been happening for quite some time now, and I suppose I was just expected to pretend it was all nothing. Silence greeted Logan from the other end, followed by a sob, and then the abrupt disconnection of the call. He stared at the foam in his hand, as if it were a venomous serpent poised to strike. Caroline had hung up, catching him off guard with the unexpectedness of her action. Setting the offending device down on the table, his hand trembled with the residual anger that had yet to dissipate. Sinking into the chair beside the table, Logan found himself with no outlet for his pent-up fury. The phone rang sharply, its sound reverberating off the walls. He stared at it blankly, feeling detached from the world around him. With no voicemail or the disposable phone he had purchased for this very purpose, he reluctantly lifted the receiver and pressed the talk button. Yes, he managed to utter, his voice devoid of the fiery indignation he had anticipated. The sudden end to their conversation had extinguished his anger like a bucket of water on a flame. Now he felt numb, a hollow emptiness settling within him, suffused with the pain he had suppressed along with his carefully laid plans. Deprived of a release for his pent-up emotions, Logan found himself overwhelmed by a sharp ache gripping his heart. Gabriella's furious voice erupted from the tiny speaker, accusing him of unsettling Caroline. Logan, it's Gabriella, to have you dare hang up. Caroline is a mess, practically hysterical. She stormed out of here and drove off in her car. What did you say to her? What did you do, Logan? Whatever it was, it's torn her apart. A new target for his fury emerged, and this time it was someone intimately involved in Caroline's betrayal. Gabriella was just as complicit as his cheating wife. Well, Gabriella, my dear sister-in-law, Logan retorted bitterly, his voice laced with contempt. I simply suggested that Caroline could stay as long as she pleases to continue her rendezvous with her lover, Christopher Hernandez. I'm well aware of your little affair, along with Caroline's involvement with Larry Lewis and Christopher. 
I know about the motel you frequent, spending nights together like some twisted quartet. Must be quite the challenge figuring out whose hand belongs to whom in the dark, isn't it? Do you keep track of who's bigger? Oh, spare me the sanctimony, Gabriella. You both are knee-deep in this mess. Gabriella urged him to let Caroline explain, but Logan's resolve was firm. No, Gabriella, it's time for Caroline to face the consequences of her actions. Logan, please, it's not what you're assuming. Caroline doesn't love Christopher. It was a mistake, a foolish one. I'm just as guilty as she is. Logan, Caroline loves you, and only you. Please, don't do anything rash. You both have too much ahead of you to throw it away. Please, Logan, wait until Caroline can explain everything to you, please. Someone will be here when she arrives. Logan's resolve remained unyielding. Well, when she gets here, there won't be much need for talking, and I won't be the one waiting for her. But then again, she didn't seem to care much either way, did she? Not since she found her beloved Christopher and his charm. Now she'll have all the time she wants with him, or anyone else for that matter. So you and Caroline should have plenty of fun in the future. No, Logan. Don't say that. Please, Logan. This will devastate her. She loves you so much, it will destroy her. You can't do this. What about the kids? How will Rachel and Anthony react? Logan, you can't tell them like this. Gabriella pleaded desperately. Too late, Gabriella. I've already told them, Logan replied grimly. I told them everything, how both of you discarded us like garbage. I informed them about what their mother was up to on those weekends. She claimed to be taking care of her mother and giving you a break. They took it surprisingly well. Dallas was more affected than Anthony, but they'll probably forgive her, considering she was always a good mother until Christopher lured her away from us. Logan, isn't there any hope for reconciliation? Are you really going to throw away 20 years of a wonderful marriage over this? Please think about what you're doing, Gabriella pleaded. Oh, Gabriella, you know better. You and Caroline were the ones who discarded me and our children. It wasn't me who did that. Goodbye, Gabriella, and give my regards to your mother. Not that she ever liked me anyway. She must be having a good laugh now. Logan said before disconnecting the call. He glanced around the small bungalow for the last time. Caroline will love it, he thought to himself, then chuckled at the irony. He switched off the lights, left the spare keys and a letter for Caroline on the table, and stepped out of the front door. Making his way to Alice's apartment, he found her waiting outside. Pulling up in front of her, he unloaded her three suitcases into the back of the car and held the door open for her. As she settled into the car, she grinned up at him. Closing her door, he circled around to the driver's side and joined her inside. Well, Alice, are you ready for this? he asked. She chuckled and affectionately touched his cheek. You bet I am, darling. It's been torture seeing you every day at the office and not being able to reach out to you or talk freely. If it weren't for Caroline discarding you for me to snatch up and then giving us those weekends, I don't know how much longer I could have endured it. Thank goodness for cheating wives, she laughed again, and they drove off. Caroline's story. When I called Logan to inquire if he minded me extending my stay for a couple more days, a strange feeling nagged at me, suggesting I shouldn't proceed. I mentioned this to Gabriella, but she merely chuckled and teased me about wanting to spend extra time with Christopher and Larry. Guilt pricked at me, as it always did when I thought of my time with them. Yet, as before, my desires overpowered any reservations. Recalling their touch, I couldn't help but feel a surge of arousal. With a shiver, I pushed aside these conflicting emotions and dialed Logan's number. Our conversation began in the usual manner, with Logan asking when I planned to return home. His tone was so ordinary, oblivious to the world I was living in, which bolstered my resolve to follow my desires. Summing my courage, I asked him if he minded my staying a few more days. Glancing at Gabriella, her grin reassured me that I was making the right choice. As I awaited his typical response, assuring me to do whatever made me happy. Once again, I assured myself that Logan wouldn't suspect a thing, and I was determined to keep my extramarital activities hidden from him. The thought of hurting him was unbearable. I still loved him deeply, but our relationship 
had lost its allure for me. I had discovered a wild side of myself that craved the excitement and pleasure my husband no longer provided. I reveled in the forbidden thrill of being with Christopher and Larry, eagerly anticipating another night of passion with them. However, those blissful fantasies were shattered when Logan's words pierced through the speaker, plunging me into a state of shock and despair. He knew about my infidelity, and his calm accusation tore through me like a knife. Paralyzed with fear and panic, I couldn't bring myself to respond. As the reality of my situation sank in, I slammed the phone down and let out a desperate sob. It was clear that my life as I knew it was over, and I faced the terrifying prospect of losing the man I loved more than anything. With a sense of urgency, I knew I had to reach Logan before he did something drastic. Ignoring everything else, I grabbed my car keys and dashed out of Gabriella's kitchen. Starting the car, I backed out of her driveway, my mind racing with thoughts of how to salvage what remained of my shattered world. I sped toward the interstate, desperate to reach home as quickly as possible. Normally, the journey took around 3.5 to 4 hours, but now I pushed my car to its limits, disregarding any potential consequences from law enforcement or speed limits. My only concern was getting home before Logan made any drastic decisions. I needed to talk to him, to confess my love and admit my foolishness. Christopher and Larry were already out of the picture, along with Gabriella. I knew I would never see them again. All I wanted was for Logan to stay with me, and I rehearsed the words I would use to convince him not to leave. Gabriella had seduced me with her lifestyle, promising that my lack of desire would vanish if I allowed myself to be with someone who didn't require my affection. She assured me that this would reignite my passion and ultimately benefit Logan as well. I initially sought to reclaim my desire, but I was lured by the temptation and excitement of something forbidden. I believed it would rejuvenate me, allowing me to bring newfound passion back to my marriage with Logan. I was confident that he would understand. However, after 90 miles of contemplation, I was confronted with a troubling question. Why hadn't that desire translated into intimacy during the seven months of my affair? It was a question I couldn't answer, and I desperately needed to find a response. As I pulled into our driveway, I was taken aback to find four cars parked there. Recognizing my children's vehicles, I felt both surprise and dread wash over me. Maneuvering around them onto the grass, I hurried toward the house. Just then, I noticed someone emerging from one of the unfamiliar cars, moving to intercept me at the front door. Disregarding the man, I fumbled for my keys, but they refused to unlock the door no matter how many times I tried. Frustrated, I hurled them onto the porch and collapsed, tears streaming down my face. Turning back to the door, I pounded on it relentlessly until the pain in my fists became unbearable. Exhausted, I glanced over to find the man still standing there. He inquired if I was Mrs. Caroline Anderson, to which I weakly nodded. Without a word, he handed me an envelope and whispered, You are served, madam. Then he passed me another smaller envelope containing the keys to my new home. Inside, he assured me I would find the deed and all pertinent information. Taking both envelopes, I stared blankly at him, my mind clouded with sorrow and agony. From his coat pocket, he withdrew a legal-sized white envelope, explaining that it contained several checks representing the balances of our closed savings and checking accounts. The man proceeded to explain that the house had been listed for sale, and once it was sold, the proceeds would be allocated to me as outlined in the divorce agreement. Everything was clearly outlined in the divorce documents. With that, he closed his briefcase and prepared to depart. Before leaving, he handed me a business card, just in case I needed it. It belonged to Logan's attorney. As he left, I watched him speak to the person in the other car, whom I didn't recognize before driving away. I stood there, holding the envelopes he had given me, feeling stunned. Dancing down at the business card, I saw the name Dallas Thomas, which stirred a mix of anger and resignation within me. Dallas had been a thorn in my side for years, though I knew it was mostly in my own mind. Before I could dwell on it further, I noticed Dallas approaching me. Hello, Caroline, she greeted me. You don't seem quite myself today. I just wanted to give you a heads up. Logan asked me to handle things in his absence, 
So if you're wondering and have lots of questions, I can provide some answers. Firstly, Logan retired effective Friday, and we had a wonderful party for him. It's a shame you missed it, but I understand you had other pressing matters. Secondly, this house has been listed with a realtor for sale. You previously signed a power of attorney, allowing Logan to transfer the title into his name, but rest assured, the proceeds from the sale are all for you. Logan left it to you in the divorce. Additionally, he purchased a lovely bungalow for you, fully paid for and furnished. Your children can take you there. Lastly, Logan granted me full authority to act on his behalf in the divorce and all his affairs here in the States. Logan has left the country, and it seems he has no plans to return for some time. As I absorbed her words, each one felt like a blow driving the stake of reality deeper into my heart. I struggled to find words, feeling as though my life had suddenly crumbled around me. When I tried to speak, nothing came out. Realizing that I had betrayed and disrespected the man I knew deep down was the only one I could truly love left me utterly defeated. Losing his love left me adrift, unsure of what to do next. Suddenly, I felt more alone than I had in the past two decades. While I still had my children in my life, the anchor to everything I held dear had vanished. I can't fathom why you would do this to Logan, Caroline. Having worked closely with him for the past 15 years, I know he cherished you and your children above all else. When he discovered what you were up to, it nearly destroyed him. Jacob and I helped him navigate through the turmoil and kept him level-headed enough to strategize how to handle the situation. We ensured he didn't act rashly, although at one point he even considered taking his own life. It was only by reminding him of his responsibilities to his children that we were able to dissuade him from such drastic measures. He's found someone else. She helped him navigate through the turmoil caused by your actions. Her identity isn't important. What matters is that she's there for him as this unfolds. Logan won't entertain the idea of talking to you, and he's indifferent to whether you contest the divorce. That's my responsibility, not his. So, to do as you wish, but understand that Logan has moved on from your life and won't be returning. With those words, she turned and walked away, heading back to her car without a backward glance. Climbing into the passenger seat, the car departed. As I slowly made my way down the driveway toward my children, standing by the cars, I braced myself for their anger and reproach. Yet, at that moment, I found I couldn't summon the strength to care. Betrayed by my husband, and now estranged from him, nothing else seemed to matter. Their words couldn't hurt more than Logan's painful truths, spoken just that morning. As I reached Anthony and Rachel, grief overwhelmed me, bringing me to my knees. Anthony extended his hand to help me up, but his expression revealed no sympathy. Instead, I saw anger, disgust, and disappointment etched on his face. It was a painful realization, and I couldn't hold back my sobs. Instead of offering solace, my daughter stood before me, arms crossed, wearing a mirrored image of her brother's disapproval. I had convinced myself that losing Logan was the ultimate pain I could endure in my marriage. Yet, the expressions on my children's faces conveyed a deeper level of disappointment. Their silent judgment pierced through me, intensifying my anguish. As I wept for all that I had lost, my children remained stoic, offering no comfort. In that moment, I realized I had also lost them. I turned to gaze once more at the home Logan, and I had lovingly built together. That house held countless memories and symbolized our family's unity. Now, it stood as a stark reminder of what I had destroyed. My husband, my marriage, my children's love, and the sanctuary we once shared, all gone. The weight of my actions crashed down on me as I pondered the consequences of my choices. How could I have been so blind to the inevitable repercussions? Dear listeners, please share your thoughts about this story in the comments below the video.